all out there in Chameleon Academy, Chame Chameleon Academy land. Welcome to this, this Saturday show where we, where we all hang out and uh, talk about chameleons and just have fun. Uh, so, boy, we got a lot of uh, people already talking in the chat there. Uh, and... Nate just got a new Tritoscontia, and I'm really interested in what it is, but it's called a quad. Looks like a four different variety in it. I've never heard of that Tritoscontia, so you know what? All, all is chaos now in the nursery world with all these, uh, all these varieties. So, okay, uh, officially it's Saturday. I know you guys got a lot going on here. Definitely uh, put your questions in the comments, but we have to check the eggs. That is important. Huh. Well, not a whole lot going on there. All right. One of these days, we're going to have a really exciting uh, 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 episode. <laughs> but uh, when I say, hey, let's check the eggs, and uh, then someone's going to say, uh, Bill, there's something moving in there. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's the Brev of Babies. Really looking forward to that. It's a cool day out here. This is wonderful weather. Uh, we're uh, we're getting ready to get the rain that James has right now. So uh, that's uh, that's going to be exciting here, and that means it's beautiful weather for my cool weather chameleons, which uh, I specialize in. Hello, Roxanne and Joanne and James and uh, oh, Tutorial Tom enjoyed the. Honiliai feature yesterday. Yes, yesterday was a uh, a video on the Chameleon Academy that was all about Tarasaurus Honiliai. And uh, I loved it as well. Let's see, Genevieve is getting ready for the 60th celebration for the California Turtles and Tortoises Club. Wow. Wow, well, they've been around for a while. Oof. But... Uh, uh, as far as uh, Honelii, I, I pronounce it differently every time, so just get used to it. I've had to. Um, it's like my brain tries to figure out what it's supposed to say every single time. But uh, that's a little helmeted chameleon, also called a high cast chameleon. And it is amazing. I mean, you just look at this thing and it's like, okay, is there anything really special about it? Doesn't have the horns, doesn't have the flashy colors. But you know, there's just something about them, and it, they have they, they are just the cutest things, and they have the most dedicated following. I mean, they're it's like you never realize how many people just love this little chameleon. So I did a uh, an episode on it yesterday on YouTube, and I uh, featured a lot of uh, members of the community that uh, keep this little species. And I mean, it's it's starting to get out of hand. I mean, now we're now we've got a Honiliati. <laughs> well, of course we can. Why not? Why not? <laughs> oh, the personality on mine is great, so cute, and they're little live bears, and they're just so, um, they're so, um. What was I going to say? I don't know. <laughs> they're live bears, and there's just a lot of fun. You named Bruxia. Uh, I say that differently every time as well. So, um, yeah, we're going to... Anybody here who is a stickler for how things are going to be pronounced is uh, going to be driven crazy by me. Um, now, Caleptratus, Caleptratus... I think I set it on Caleptratus, but every now and then Caleptratus comes out. So Jacksonia, Jacksonii, Jacksoni, Parsoni, Parsonii. Yeah, I, me and Latin have an adversarial relationship. Uh, and Roxanne says Brochesia. You know what? Any any way is fine with me. That is that is correct. That is correct. 
But uh, then if we start to get, uh, uh, you know, what's really fun is when we start to pronouncing uh, Wieder Schemi, Weiders Heimai, uh, German, named after a German. Yeah, that, that starts, gets kind of fun. Shamrocks is a new species Bill found. Uh, no, I just gave him a better name. <laughs> um, oh, hello, Mikey. Yeah, here we go. Everything is special about the Honelia. Little bruisers. They're they're just charming. They're just charming. And it's like it's it's kind of interesting that there are they are so they have such a dedicated following, but they're relatively unknown to the wider community. So all right. I'm spotting underground reptiles brought in some mini Chameleons, including shamrocks, they're being sold for some big bucks. Perhaps the Bill Strand effect. Yeah, excellent. Sounds good to me. Um. Oh, 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 Matthew, that Bomi. By, you know what? I have no idea how to pronounce that. I have tried Bomi. That I think that's what I've uh, I've settled on because I have a a little bit of a affinity for La avatar the last airbender but <laughs> uh so bomi i think that's his name yeah and what was it yeah o'shaughnessy i no everybody spells it differently every single time yeah, it's uh so we all have uh have a lot of fun have a lot of fun by the way to turtle tom how much how much are they selling shamrocks for? I'd be very interested in that. So, um, oh, wow. Okay. Oh, by the way, I am, uh, today's uh, coffee is actually a, uh, one of those foofy concoctions that my wife brought home to me. I said, uh, my, uh, my, my, my precious wife surprised me. And so she went out and got something. She actually got something I've never heard of before. This is an oatmeal cookie cold brew from Phil's. And so, uh, and apparently it really doesn't come out until next week, but she is, she got a little, um, they made it for her anyways. That's what you get when you're like cute, like she is. It's it's kind of interesting what kind of things she gets just because she's adorable. <laughs> and, and yes, I benefit from that. <laughs> the only time I got something extra was when the uh, manager at Starbucks seemed to have a little crush on me. Uh, whenever I would show up, all of a sudden she'd come out with samples and come to our table first. <laughs> and uh, that was... Okay, so you know what? Yeah, it's very rare that I get that kind of attention. So let's let's all be let's all let's just bask in that little little fun thing. Um, let's see, they were five fifty. Okay, that's okay. Uh, they have Parsons become the huge chameleon choice. Well imported. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, you're going to be fun to be with in Madagascar. <laughs> Tias Mantoy. <laughs> yeah, that, have, you, uh, have you pronounce everything for us? Yes, that is unfortunately true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, talking about the difference between Parsons and Ustaletai. Yeah, I got to say, unfortunately, Parson is like a level above. They really are. So, um, da, 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 da. All right. So I need to know from the community, how are things going? Actually, I've got one more uh, announcement to make and uh, and then but put put what's going on in the comments. I need to know what's going on in the community. Uh, I'm going to be uh, shifting up my my video outreach. 
Uh, as you know, I've been doing a daily uh, vlog and daily episodes for the last since the since the uh, the end of January, and a lot of that was a kind of a boot camp training for me to get me really working in the uh, the video realm. Even though I have like 500 YouTube videos, I never felt really comfortable with it. And so uh, when I don't feel comfortable with something, I just jump in the deep end and say, I'm going to do it, force myself to do it until I'm comfortable with it. And uh, my milestone for when I know I've accomplished the goal for this particular one was when I had 52 episodes, 52 vlog episodes, which essentially meant that I, in uh, the span of a quarter, three months, I created a year's worth of YouTube uh, material, which uh, I, I was very proud of myself. That was a personal, personal goal. So now I am I'm backing off from that, and I am now working on some uh, quality, uh, increasing the quality of some of these videos. So coming the next week, we are going to have uh, uh, two videos. First of all. We're going to have a Monday video that's going to be essentially a vlog episode uh, talking about what I've done and where, what it's all, all the behind the scenes. And it's going to be kind of a chameleon academy, woohoo! but uh, it'll uh, kind of officially be the last daily vlog. And then uh, the next show will be Wednesday. The DIY chameleon guys will always be on Wednesday. That's not uh, changing. So I will, at least my plan at this point is that uh, have an, uh, an episode on every Monday and an episode, the DIY guys and every Wednesday and the episode on Monday and the DIY guys will both have premieres. So they both have the live chats and that will allow me to uh, put five videos worth of effort into one video because I want to do my fundamentals uh, uh, series. The, where I started with the Forest Edge 5 plus 5. There's so many other things that I want to do and I want to make them solid episodes because they're going into my basics course on my website. And so that is going to get my attention. So um, next next week, join me Monday morning for uh, kind of a, uh, uh, a, uh, a Chameleon Academy vlog type episode. And then on Wednesday... The live schedule stays the same. Tuesday nights, Saturday afternoons, and probably chore night, at least for now. Uh, we're going to keep them like that. So that's what next week looks like. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what's going on in the chat here. How do I put Derpy on a diet? She's getting fat. Just, cut, just slowly cut back on how much you feed her. So... To, uh, just over the weeks, slowly cut back until you get like three feeder insects of the appropriate size every other day. That's uh, so eh, that's how you do it. And she's not going to Derby's not going to be happy about it. Yeah. How many of you guys are headed to Madagascar in 2025? We have a party of 10 plus me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my problem. I uh, I use uh, snacks help me think, and so I got to be really careful what kind of stuff I keep in the house, and uh, so I make sure that you know, Yvette gets healthy stuff, and that's good because it's like I always need to be chewing on something when I'm thinking, and I do a whole lot of thinking here. So. Uh... Yeah, guilty of spoiling. So, uh, what's James going to do without the daily vlog? I you probably get to work on time, <laughs> except on Wednesday. Oh. Huh. Has anybody experienced mold on the dirt that is stuck to eggs? The Petra eggs seem to have a light mold on the dirt stuck to the egg. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I do. Remove the dirt. If it's not stuck to the egg, then there's I'm just guessing that there was something else in that was spilled or came with it or whatnot that uh, the mold is going towards. 
But uh, okay, so good, good. Got that taken care of. All right, Mikey Ben, for all those who don't know that uh, Mikey Ben's in Canada and is uh, breeding lateralis, the carpet chameleon, from diapause back to the incubator. Three eggs look like they didn't make. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. I'm sorry about that. Bill, she guilt. Well, I'm not going to be able to help you at all with that because I cannot, I cannot resist when my chameleons guilt me. So uh, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go somewhere else if you want somebody who's going to tell you different. Uh, so, oh my goodness, Eliza Ann got her microscope. Excellent. Parasite party. I'm so excited to start checking poops. All right. You know what? That means that I've got to get to uh, that episode. I, I've been getting all sorts of footage for this video episode about how to how to check parasites. And it looks like I'm going to have to, you know, maybe I have to, have to switch up my, my fundamentals series and add in how to check for parasites. <laughs> and, and so if you'll notice, you will notice, I've only got one episode, so you don't notice any pattern, but uh, my plan is uh, if you go on my website, Chameleon Academy, there's a basics course that goes over every all of the basics. And if you go through that basics course, you pretty much have a handle on how to take care of chameleons. And the idea of the fundamentals course was that every episode of the fundamentals will go up on top of every module of the basics. And so I'm going to have a video for every one of the basics. There are some things that aren't on there, like checking parasites that wouldn't a beginner wouldn't need to know that, but hey, I can still make a fundamentals because, you know, I'll have to have a, a sophomore class for fundamentals. Yeah. Do you have a sense of hatch ratios for wild clutches? Nope. Nope. That would, that is, I don't even know how we'd figure that out because even if people in Madagascar fenced in, they'd have to fence in a chameleon that laid naturally. Uh, gosh, but even then, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, Ty. Um, that is, but that would be very cool. And you know what? I am betting that it's the same dynamic as we have in captivity. The better fed they are, the more food they can find the bigger, the better uh, the babies are able to survive. That's uh, That would make a lot of sense to me. I, I don't know why it would be any different. Um, oh, now everybody is uh, collecting poop for the poop for the parasite party. You know, this is great. <laughs> Haven't opened the lid yet, but at least I have it. Have to wait until the hubby isn't home so he doesn't know I bought one. <laughs> well, well, hopefully he doesn't watch this show. <laughs> yes, we need a parasite class. All right, you know what? That's that is a good point. I should maybe I should just make a an, an afternoon seminar. Would anybody want to? If if I put together a seminar, would anybody uh, pay to do go to a parasite seminar? We'll. Uh, he does sometimes. Hey, Brett. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Maybe that would be fun. I, I I, can put together something like that and make it an official, an official class that is worth coming to. It'd be probably a four-hour class considering the stuff that I got to go through. So we can do that. We can do that. I think uh, I think that would be a lot. I would enjoy that. I would enjoy doing that. So I'll have to start putting something like that together. And uh, let's see. He is checking the bees today, so we won't watch this one. Okay, good, good. So we're free to to speak on things. We are spe free to speak on things that are uh, not to be mentioned. <laughs> the bees. What is the story behind you having bees? I really love, uh, I'd love to have bees, but uh, I'd love to hear your story, your uh, story as to why you have bees and why he has to travel far 
enough to be away from this show to go check on check on them excuse me all right people are starting to reserve the seats already i see this could you invite your vet to that fecal love to see you both work together um i don't know i i will brainstorm and figure out what can be done so brett just came home one day and said he wanted bees so now we have like three hives oh so he wants bees you want chameleons and things grow in different corners of the property that works that works oops Ooh, now okay all right nobody can see that that's yep, yep, yep. <laughs> i don't need any competition for getting getting some fresh honey that would be awesome so uh all right everybody we need to be uh, uh gentle with fergie fergie made it but is out of coffee so um thoughts and prayers thoughts and prayers Hello, Richard. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Oh, well, everybody, we are. Um, I, I I am getting ready for an an incredible week. So next week will be <laughs> next next uh, weekend will probably be Parsons weekend. Going to have a lot of fun. Um, ah, Marshan's got a great uh, great suggestion. A list of supplies we could gather first. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I'll put some thought to, together as to how we can make this a formal class and the most useful class uh, possible. And I, th I think there's things I can pull together. So it's more than just like a YouTube video, but uh, an actual, um, we can go through an actual fecal. We can have, I uh, can have some uh, examples and uh, even, even some handouts or something. So I think we can really have a we can have a lot of fun with this one. Joanne, thank you very much. Joanne's always good at those super stickers and in, in supporting the show. We appreciate that. So um, we'll get that there. So all right. Well, so we got a bunch of people who want to learn about parasites. What else? This is an interesting question, an interesting topic. What other kind of courses would you be interested in if I were to create, say, a, a Saturday course every two months? What kind of other things would you guys like to see? Would you say, hey, that would be worth spending uh, four hours on a Saturday afternoon to dive into a certain topic with uh, live instruction? And that's... That's one thing that that I do like is being there live and having a live interactive instruction. So, uh, so let me uh, let's see, let's see what we have to record it so it can be a continuously offered class that people can sign up for down the road. That's a a great great idea uh, for me to create it, and uh, the first one will be a live class, and then the ones after that will be um, just a class session that uh, a an asynchronous class session. That is a great idea. Oh, you are lucky. That is awesome. That is awesome that ties going to Costa Rica. I love Costa Rica. Basilisks. Oh, man. I just loved looking at the basilisks. Thank you, Nate, very much. Wow, that's a super, super sticker. Thanks for guiding the chameleon community to help our animals thrive. And thank you very much for that. And Stinky's joining in. Thank you, Stinky. Stinky just uh, came out of nowhere. <laughs> what is this? Um, this is uh, uh, suggestions, raising and hatching babies, setting up a room as a breeding project. Okay, these are good ones. <laughs> Proper setup of Miss King. Those horrible Miss Kings. They are wonderful, but boy, they are complicated. Especially the new timers. It is the new timer is so hard to figure out. I mean, it's like <laughs> I mean, it's like some engineer, they gave some engineer 
carte blanche to just do whatever he wanted. And it made a whole lot of sense to him. And I can say this because I was an engineer. I actually designed things like timers and such. And I know how crazy we can get. And by the time we're done, it can do everything, but people can't figure it out. Yeah. That's why I went to product marketing. And then I became the, the interface between the engineer and the real world. So... Fergie got Panther Chameleon the other day, warmed up under the lights, had to drink off Pothos, snagged a few crickets. All right, congratulations. Uh, thank you for the help, being a prayer prepared well in advance. Yep, that is the perfect way to have a great experience with a chameleon. Uh, Oh, wife going to Costa Rica? Yeah, actually, Costa Rica was a uh, an easier an easier one than Madagascar would be, and you still get to see a whole lot of real cool animals. Do you do gram stains for bacteria? I leave that, I leave that to the vet. I do not do gram stains, although I am certainly not beyond learning how to do that myself, but I don't know at this point. Um, yeah. Maybe we could send in pictures of the fecal, say what we think we found, and you can give us the correct... Oh, interesting. Interesting. And this is a Corcovado National Park in Costa Rica. I was there. I was not in Cano Negro. I was... In the fact, I don't... Is that the one that's south? I wanted to go uh, like the, was it San Manuel? That has the spider, uh, the squirrel monkeys, but I wasn't able to go there. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Hello, Chris. Welcome. Welcome. We are just talking about uh, the wonderful things that we're all doing in the chameleon community and also talking about uh, classes and I'm uh, talking about doing uh, formal classes like on a Saturday afternoon, a four hour class. First one would be about uh, parasites using a microscope and such. And so brainstorming, what kind of things would, uh, would you like to, would you say it would be very cool to have a class on a Saturday afternoon? So who class on breeding bugs? And gut loading. Yeah, I mean, this would be a lot of fun if I could, uh, if uh, this is something that would catch on, I'll bring on people. I'll bring on teachers. I'll pay people to teach us, which would be a lot of fun. If I can find people that would treat it seriously and actually do the preparation and put together a class. Um, so uh, that would be, this is, uh, you know what, we're going to try it. I'll try it. I'll do one. I'll do the first one and I'll, uh, uh, see how it works. We can do that. Just got a rainbow Jackson's chameleon. Saved him from a cohabitated setup at a mom and pop reptile store. Saw he was missing a toe and has battle scars. Poor little dude's got a nice home now at least. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Oh. Tarsier. In a few weeks, my Jackson is going to its outside exhibit again. Live in the Netherlands. He will be outside till the end. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's uh, up in the Netherlands. I love the Netherlands. Oh, I had so much. I enjoyed being there very much. Very much. Oh, what the? Lori, thank you very much. Ex wow. <laughs> wow. And James is coming in too. Thank you. Wow, this is a this is a great a great session today. Thank you, everyone. Let's see. Okay, uh, Cano Negro is to the north, border to Nicaragua. Okay, so that wasn't what. I, yeah, San Manuel, I think, is uh, what I was. Thinking. Is it? Is that the the one? Ah, try to 
see, I've replaced all of my Costa Rica knowledge with Madagascar knowledge. I'm working on that. But uh, let's see, Costa Rica, I went back in uh, 91, I think, nine, 1990. So, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Uh, so I like the idea. There is, I did a, a uh, like a, a, a webinar. I tried webinars back in, I think, 2020 where I, I did an entire uh, Forest Edge 5 plus 5. And it was, it was a, uh, boy, it took uh, longer than I thought. And I talked for four hours and I wasn't able to talk for a day after that. Uh, but uh, let's see. All right, everybody. I've seen some cool chameleons today at the Reptile Expo where I forgot the name. Starts with an a and has the nose sticking out really a not anjali was it imported can't be anjali <laughs> that would be you, know, the, you mean the latin name a okay everybody brainstorm what chameleon species starts with an a i'm stuck on anjali but that is a very rare one it does have a nostril very rare. I would be so... Wow. I've only seen one of those. Umbanja? Oh, Umbanja ambulance. <laughs> but he has the nose sticking out. Okay, the Umbanja's often the... Pan Was it a panther chameleon, Chris? Antimena? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Stinky. Antimena? That's definitely... Antimena has the nose sticking out. Uh, Chris, if it was Antimena... It was Manuel Antonio. Yes, Masian incarnation. That's it. Okay, Chris says yes, Antimena. Yeah. Okay, that would be yeah, definitely has the rostral, the nostril, rostral protuberance, and the the spikes on the back. That's very interesting. That uh, one of, that an Antimena showed up at the expo. So must have been somebody got a, an import somewhere because those are not. Not usually captive bred. Hey, you guys want me to? I'm going to see if I can pull up a a picture of first for Auntie Mena. There we go. Uh, allow, allow. Yes, yes. Got to accept prior. Oh. Okay, good, good, good. Stop, stop. All right, guys, I'm going to bring up Antimena so we can take a look at it. There we go. These guys are... They can take a wide range of, of, of temperatures. It's uh, it's a pretty hardy chameleon. And the people who have worked with it, uh, there are some, and I know, I, I believe Michael Nash is working with it, have really enjoyed this chameleon. I have never had an Antimena. Nick, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, I... Uh, they're antimena is one of those things it's kind of like brevicorn you hardly see them but the people the people really like it let's see uh idea for a course a deal uh, uh, on the rarely but sometimes available species more visibility into these guys yeah good idea stinky yeah that would be uh that would work so, uh, oh, yeah, it seems like in Madagascar, this uh, this body type is a pretty popular one. You got uh, Bifidus, you've got Labordi, and where to find them? The the back back roads of the chameleon community. Where to find more rare species against it? Uh, Eliza, and I can I can. Uh, 
take you exactly, uh, tell you exactly where to look. And uh, if you're interested and uh, we, t we tend to know, we tend to know who is bringing this stuff in. And so there's uh, like three places that you keep your eye on for these rare species. Uh, and uh, we can, when those things come in, um, it, of course, One World Exotica, that they bring in really good stuff. That's Jay Dubay. He brings in really good stuff. I think chameleon cans. I've never worked with chameleon cans, but he's always got stuff on Morph Market. Interesting stuff. And then Reptile Pets Direct in Texas. Uh, Craig brings in a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, you'll uh, get a lot of real interesting stuff. And, uh, and then you'll uh, then you'll know why it's so hard to establish anything. It's because we've got so much to choose from and we and it's really hard to stay focused on one thing when you've got so much so much in the candy shop. But then you got people like Steve that just uh, hang out with uh, one species and just just stick with one or two species and uh, and dedicate over the years. There we go. Have you ever interviewed Jay from One World? Nate, he is a he. Uh, he likes to stay in the background. He's not. Uh, he, he's not much for being interviewed. And uh, it's not in a I don't like you sort of way. It's just, uh, yeah, he just doesn't want to do that. So uh, uh, yeah, he is, uh, he knows he is welcome, but uh, he's not, that's just not his thing right now. Uh, let's see. Why is Mikey doing math? Goodbye, Joanne. Thank you very much for dropping by. I'd like to see a show on incubators, product information settings. That would be a very short video. I could do a short on that. And uh, I it would just me coming up to the, uh, the camera and saying, there's nothing uh, really on incubators. We chameleon people, we need uh, cooling incubators. And there's a really some really cheap thermoelectric ones that, that uh, fritz out randomly one of them can work for years and then another one can fritz out at six months uh, i had a very high-end one that destroyed two incredibly rare clutches of eggs and so i had to get rid of that and uh that the, that there is just you know you could buy an incubator for about a thousand dollars up up there uh if you want to get a real real uh solid scientific one but there is such a hole in the market if anybody wants to make a a heating cooling incubator for reptile eggs you, you would you would not have competition and you would have so many people who would just throw money at you so uh there you go yeah uh so what i do for my chameleons, I actually got a, a, a wine cooler so I could do the, uh, the diapause. And then I use the under the bed method for the rest of the incubation. But uh, yeah, I'd love to love to have a product. And James, <laughs> DIY chameleon guys, but you know what? This uh, making a good solid incubator would be a huge benefit for the community. So maybe that's what we need to do for the DIYs. Yeah, and all the wine fridge is great. We just need to make it uh, go above 65 degrees. If we can get it up to uh, 72, 74, controllable up to 74, then we'd have it. So... Uh, Got sucked in that rabbit hole in my last door. Oh, talking about how many different uh, species there are. And uh, Nick got uh, another, a pair of we'll see with that. We'll see I. 
Chris says, that's no problem, Bill. All right, then. All right, Chris. You want to, we, we need to, let's get together and let's, uh, let's get a, a DIY chameleon guys episode together and we'll make a uh, heating cooling incubator. That would be awesome. And I'm serious about that. So uh, you got to tell me what, what your idea is. And really with the wine cooler, all we need to do is tap into the uh, control circuit and, uh, and change the thermistor or just the limits. No, they, they shouldn't. Anyway, as a electronic engineer, uh, I, I think at a, a very, very core uh, component level. So I need, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. Brandon, thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Mine stays at 86. Oh, we don't want you got a wine cooler that stays at 86 degrees. I, I don't understand why you'd have a wine cooler for 86 degrees, but hey, we just need to get it up to 72, 74 and not go above that. That's what we need for our chameleon eggs. But I'll ask uh, Nick. From Uns Arium, how do you do your, um, how do you do your incubation? Uh, you've got to do, you've got eggs that require diapause and then the, the standard incubation. How do you do that? Just drill a hole in the back and put an under the tank and thermostat. Oh, okay. So you're just so you're just using the wine cooler as a container. Um, yeah, okay. That that can heat it. Yeah, we we need uh we need cooling. We need to uh, tap into the cooling mechanism. Yeah. All right, Steve. We'll see ya. All right, James, we'll talk about this. We'll figure out, I want to, I want to hear a plan as to how people think that uh, that this can be done. We can eat, add a heating element. That's true. Um, but uh, the whole thing about keeping it at 72, which means general cooling. All right, folks, we have a lot of conversation going on, so we're going to figure out this whole cooling thing. And uh, that would be welcome. And it would be a great thing for the DIY chameleon guys. So, oh, hey. Oh. Everybody, um, just a reminder. Geesh. Uh, this thing, Mountain Dragons, this is the absolute best book on the Kenyan chameleons. Gorgeous. Uh, there are... There are probably about a hundred of these left in the world uh, from the first printing. The uh, it is unknown whether there will ever be a second printing, and so um, you can find these at DragonStrand.com if you are in the U.S. Uh, so just a, a reminder that this is slowly disappearing, and what usually happens with chameleon books is they're out, and then when they're gone, they're gone. And sometimes you can find them used books, sometimes not. So if you're interested in chameleons, um, I mean this thing, any like the Jackson's chameleons. Let's see if we. Uh, this is a story of Jan Stapala went into uh, Kenya, and just uh, documented the uh, the chameleons that he found. Here, there's your uh, for all you uh, Honelli fans. And uh, yeah, you talk about the uh, so you can learn about the chameleons in their their habitat and uh, the blue eyed Jackson's chameleon. Everybody know that there was a, there's such thing as blue eyed Jackson's chameleon. Yeah, well, there's a whole lot of 
different chameleons that we have never seen uh, and variations. The Jackson's chameleons are so diverse and variable. Let's see if I can find... Find some uh, good things to show you here. I'm going to find, there's some very cool pictures. I'm going to let me see where I can find. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's some of the blue-eyed Jackson's chameleons. Let's see. No, no glare. And, of course, the Xanthalophus. So, uh, yeah. And then... Honelli, look at the redhead Honelli. Ooh, look at the guy down there. So very cool. Uh, oh, I got it. I want to show you. Find. Oh, hey. I really love the Machacos Hills Jackson's Chameleon fighting there. And where? Oh, yeah. I got to find the. Uh, <laughs> look at these guys. What the heck? Oh, man. So the thing is, the Kenya, we just see four species coming out of Kenya. But there are so much that is in Kenya that we don't hear about. And this book starts going into and uh, introduces you to all of these different species. Uh, and it's just Jan traveling through the mountains. Oh, hey. Some from the very high... I mean, look at that stuff. So dragonstrand.com is where you can find this book. And uh, if, if sales go the way they're going, they will be sold out before the end of this year. So make sure you chameleon people, uh, chameleon, I want every chameleon Academy person to have one. So when they're gone, we can all say, yeah, but we got ours. So, uh, See, I have a $600 incubator that I don't plug in and a wine cooler for diapause set at 59 degrees. Made shelves out of corrugated plastic to slide in rec grooves. I cut stripes to allow temperature to flow. So uh, what do you do for when you want to bring it up out of diapause? You just keep them at room, room temperature? Chameleon Academy, is there a Kenya trip in our future? It's possible. It is possible. Um, and so I will say <laughs> if uh, if things go well with uh, the Madagascar trip, there may be a couple of Madagascar trips and then a Kenya trip and South Africa trip. And uh, we may, I may make it a, a an annual thing. So uh, there's definitely a possibility. The reason for that due to lack to a law or a lack of interest. You're talking about the printing? I uh, mean, the book? Okay, uh, Nate, which one are you talking about? The reason for that due to a law or lack of interest. Um, oh, 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 so you're probably talking about only four species coming out of Kenya. Uh, a law. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, I think for, for Jackson's in captivity. Um, no, the um, there is a law that says the uh, the Jacksons have to be farm raised to go out, but there's no law that says you can't. The, the laws uh, don't differentiate between the subspecies of Jackson's chameleons, and the Jackson's chameleons are not uh, really very well delineated there's the xanthalophus and then there's jackson i jackson jacksoni i jacksoni i there's everything else and so uh you can legally if they're farm raised you can ship out any of the locales uh but yeah the, the thing is once you start to get into some of the the more specialty locales they're like higher altitude and they're not going to necessarily do as well in captivity because the higher in altitude, they need more UVB. That's no problem, but they need lower temperatures and 
definitely lower nighttime drops. And so, you know, it's probably a good idea that we don't have all those different varieties <clears throat> because considering how many, how much trouble people have giving the Xanthalophus the nighttime drop they want, you know, we, we just have a lot of dead Jackson's chameleons with everybody saying, well, mine does fine, has done fine for a week, so I'm going to keep, keep them at 72. Uh, so uh, that there, there may be at time that some of those more specialty come out, but if it does, um, it, it would have to be a very controlled situation. And uh, you know, it, it may. There have been some talks, but. Uh, Whenever I am involved in those talks with the people saying, is there a market for this when they're thinking about going through the effort of bringing them in, I always say there isn't a real reason to do that because we're not going to be able to give the care and we haven't even established the Machacos Hills, Jackson's Chameleon or the, uh, the Xanthalophus. So why bring in another more rare, more demanding speed, uh, variant? Let's let's just leave those where they are. We don't even know how many there are, and until science actually says these are the uh, the breaks up Jacksonii Jacksonii into you know four seven different subspecies or species. Until then, I say we just leave them where they are. Because all it takes is for someone to say, oh, we love blue-eyed Jackson's chameleons. And so a collector goes and gets them and denudes the entire area. Uh, and there is no law that differentiates between subspecies. And so those rare locales are, are just decimated before they can even be recognized as a separate, uh, a separate locale to be protected. And it's the same thing with Parsons chameleons. Same thing with panther chameleons. So, uh, you know, science really has to catch up with uh, the, the taxonomists are the ones that are really uh, tax, uh, really have to uh, do this. And the government, I'm surprised that we don't recognize, that CITES doesn't recognize subspecies. Uh, the whole conservation thing, I mean, when we protect the panther chameleon, we all know how many different types of panther chameleon there are. And, uh, you, you know, if the entire western seaboard of Madagascar is totally denuded of all panther chameleons and, uh, and you still do your uh, population studies with the eastern coast, then... Yeah, that that doesn't stop these things from disappearing from the wild. And so uh, luckily that hasn't happened uh, that I know of, but uh, that, that's a concern. That is a concern about uh, with conservationists and they, they know that this is a problem. And so they're working on it. Uh, cats are staring me down. Bye. I'll, bye, Ty. I promise to keep my Latin to myself. I'm at, no, you know what? <laughs> hey, <laughs> oh, we, we have so many different, pronunciations is it expected that oh hey sean's here is it expected that the split will happen into subspecies nate there is the argument that there will be subspecies and there could be actual full speciation uh it is expected that marimontanus would be a full species raised up to a full species uh, as for all the Jacksonii, Jacksonii, good question. There's still so much, like there's still specimens of Jacksonii, Jacksonii that are known from one photograph that was taken so long ago and they haven't found the population. Uh, they don't know where that photograph was taken. So there's so much that has to be done to uh, sort out the Jackson's chameleon. Hello, Katrina. Yes, Nate actually, I believe, has it. Yes, 
Yes. So, all right, everybody, we are coming to the end of today's show. I'm going to put this book back. So if you have any last questions or comments, please put them in the chat. And we were going to, uh, we'll go over it. Uh, James, James, are you still here? Maybe we should have a letting of the fog. We haven't had one of those for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, both, both sides. It's cool today and I'm, I'm uh, replicating a wet season. I'm trying to get some females to lay their eggs. Yeah. Will you go in depth on chameleon trading and capture in Madagascar? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, yeah, give me a little bit of what you mean by that. You want a uh, like a video or, or an explanation as to how the capture is done? I have talked a lot about CITES and the legalities of it, uh, but let me know what you mean. Give me some, uh, uh, give me some uh, detail as to what you are curious about. How are the eggs? Uh, the brevicorn eggs are just hanging tight, hanging tight. So we'll see. Yes, this is the Fog Father salute right here. Are you still looking for view submitted questions for the vlog? I have one I can send. Yeah, go ahead. Send it to me, Stinky. Yeah, send it to me via email. There are some stings that I'm still, some questions that, uh, and and I'm going to be doing a whole lot more with shorts. And so, it, you know, I can answer a lot in 60 seconds. So definitely, if you have any questions about chameleons, something you want to know, um, Send me a question via email to here. We'll go ahead. Uh, there we go. If you have questions that you would like me to answer in in video, definitely send them to my email at uh, chameleonacademy.com, and I will be making uh, a lot of shorter videos. Uh, and I, I would love to answer your questions. My chameleon sits in the dirt in a pot, plant pot. Is that okay? Depends on why they sit in the dirt in the plant pot. Um, and there could be a number of reasons. I mean, I, I have my uh, veiled chameleons outside. And sometimes when it's really cold, they curl up inside of the pot to get away from the cold. Uh, and, that, and then they sleep in uh, in the dirt. They dig a little hole, and they they're they're under there protected. So, you know, it all depends on why, and that's where it may get a little bit tricky as you figure out why. I believe my Honelii has an RI. I'm waiting for an appointment to be seen by a vet. What can I do in the meantime? I've been bringing him out for natural sun in the AM for about an hour. I mean, that's really. The best thing you can do for a chameleon that has a respiratory infection is to fix whatever husbandry problem created the respiratory infection. Uh, the respiratory infection happens when the immune system cannot fight off the bacteria that is always there. And so you've got to fix whatever problem, whatever low-grade stress uh, produced a compromised immune system. Was it too cold? Was it too hot? Is there uh, another chameleon in the cage? with cohabitation stress, these kind of things, you got to figure out what it is and remove that. Once you remove the stress, then the immune system can try to come back. Now, unfortunately, when the bacteria is has grown to the point where it's so strong, it, it's really difficult for the immune system to come back, but at least you're giving them a fighting chance. And so uh, figure out what what caused it to begin with. Let's see. Uh, this is a question. Local trading and sales in general. Also, what are the benefits and environmental effects from these traders compared to local breeders? Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I've done I've done a video about that somewhere, but uh, I can always break it up into shorts. And uh, okay, I'll do it, uh, Brandon. Just watch the channel. I'll uh, talk about that this week, and I'll uh, I'll uh, release some episodes uh, talking about this general topic this week. And uh, so, okay. Thoughts on Reptaid? Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't used it much. Uh, I suppose it would be the the context. And made a stupid mistake making his environment too humid. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad you uh, figuring uh, figuring out the problem is the first first issue uh, first thing to do. All right, everybody. It is time to close off the uh, the show. Thank you very much for joining here. And the next time I will be on, I will be doing uh, chore night tomorrow night at uh, five p.m. And uh, that'll be the next time I go live. And uh, remember, next week I'm going to be doing a Monday episode uh, that where we're going to have the the chat live chat. And then next week is going to be Monday and Wednesday. So thank you, everyone. And I'll see you later. <laughs>